Cities today are facing increasing urbanization at historically unprecedented rates. This growth is happening at a time when there's also a profound shift in consumer expectations. Our taste for the immediate delivery of food and pretty much everything else is introducing new challenges for our modern cities. For the past five years, on-demand deliveries have increased by over 200%. Just over the past year, on-demand deliveries and orders online have increased by 60%. And so the state of the curb has changed. The influx of couriers and delivery vehicles is adding more chaos to already overcrowded streets, leading to trickle down effects like congestion and increased emissions. These unique challenges, in addition to the emergence of new modes of transportation, are adding a lot of pressure, especially at the curbside. Curbs are the starting point for managing and ultimately transforming our streets and public spaces. It could be the key to maximizing mobility, sustainability, and access in the future. This is why we're putting the spotlight on automotives. They're using computer vision technology to bring our curbsides into the 21st century. I'm Jordan Justice, co-founder and CEO of Automotus. Yeah, I mean, we're an LA-based company and being, you know, living in LA for the past eight years, you're just exposed to these problems at a scale that you might not be elsewhere. The curb is a pretty stagnant piece of infrastructure right now. It's something that's policies and a lot of cities haven't changed in 40, 50 years. And it's being used much more dynamically now the explosion of e-commerce and on-demand delivery, along with new mobility modes and micro-mobility options, are transforming how we move around our cities, creating a chaotic scene at the curb. Here, the battle for space has never been more fierce, and the existing infrastructure simply isn't holding up against its 21st century uses. A solution more appropriate for the times could be in the digitization of the curb. My name is Arian Devani. I am the head of partnerships and policy at Automotis. I joined the founding team about a year ago. So the problem we're trying to solve at Automotis is we're helping cities monetize and manage commercial activity for the first time uh, using computer vision and video analytics. Cities can no longer use paint and street lights and stop signs to manage the curb. And so there has to be a more dynamic solution. The solution is installing cameras on street lights and leveraging computer vision technology to help cities understand how their curbs are being used in real time and historically, eventually enabling them to automate all the operations there. Through this type of automation, cities can finally capture critical data that will help them make more informed decisions on future policy. Now to understand how one gets from data to policy, it's helpful to understand a concept called the curb management journey. The curb management journey points to the different stages that cities go through when putting together a technology acceptance plan and a curb management roadmap. It starts with data collection. You know, first you have to understand what's going on at the curb. First we assess, you know, the amount of traffic and where it's coming from, the different modes and where the violations are happening. Really what it's best used for, the data is driving policy to align with demand and uh, making sure utilization is as high as possible. And so data collection is that first part of the curb management journey. Then they move into reallocation of how the curb is being used. Once they reallocate that space, and we've seen many cities moved into this stage during COVID where they've started assigning additional pickup drop-off zones for um, on-demand delivery companies for food. Uh, once they reallocate that space, they have to figure out how to price it. We're coming in and helping automate the entire parking and enforcement process using our technology at those loading zones. We're working on something that's going to have an impact that's gonna last for the next 100 years in terms of how data is being used to form policy. Automation at the curb brings benefits to both cities and fleet operators. Cities are looking for more creative ways to alleviate congestion and promote more sustainable forms of transportation, while fleet operators, seeing record profits, are looking for ways to cut costs and operate more efficiently. Dedicated curb space, in addition to digital record keeping and management, could be the most viable solution we have. If it works, this will pave the way for new sources of revenue for cities, increased efficiency for operators, and the promotion of zero emissions delivery for the benefit of all of us. As I mentioned, different cities are in different stages of the curb management journey. What's exciting is, you know, we have the opportunity right now to work with cities in all different stages. One such city is Santa Monica, 
where Automotus is collecting data in the nation's first zero emissions delivery zone. It's a pilot project spearheaded by Los Angeles Clean Tech Incubator and a great example of how innovation happens in modern cities. Yeah, so Lacey was appointed to quarterback and spearhead the Zeds project. It's a 1.2 square mile radius zone that the city of Santa Monica has dedicated for delivery of goods and services that are zero emission. And they're showcasing new zero emission delivery vehicles, not just cars, but also sidewalk delivery robots, electric cargo bikes, and we'll be tracking all different modes. If all goes to plan, the Zeds project could provide a blueprint for other cities looking to do similar work. Curb management technology could be another tool in our arsenal for the fight against emissions and congestion. Now, as with any technology, particularly ones that involve cameras in public spaces, there's always the concern about privacy. What liberties might we be giving up? But it's something that Automotive has been thinking about since its inception. In fact, they seem to have understood from the very beginning that privacy is key to their acceptance and ultimate success. Yeah, so, you know, anytime cameras are being used in the public right of way, there's always a concern of how that data is being stored and used. We use a privacy by design approach, and so um, we process all information on the ground and we anonymize all that information. We don't share any personal identifiable information with any third parties. Um, we don't provide any information to uh, police departments. Uh, unlike uh, surveillance or any company that actually uh, records data, uh, we don't have to store it. As we end, let's get back to the upside. If we really want to enhance mobility in our cities, we need to understand how they're being used. Collecting the right type of information is the first piece of the puzzle. And perhaps by leveraging technology and information, we could start to promote and build the urban spaces we truly want in the future. It's part of a much bigger solution that's needed for cities. What's the whole, yeah, the whole ecosystem. Yeah. That's what, that's kind of why my job is so fun, because I'm, yeah, I'm you, putting together the pieces, you know? Right. And, and then yeah. as you put together the pieces, it, un it unlocks new possibilities with each piece you put together. And then this vision that we've been talking about for years, all of a sudden, you're like, oh wow, we're, not, we're like two months away from yeah. executing on that vision.